as you see me here sir there are some things that can never pop up on my phone because i know if i am not spiritually minded death will wake up thank you for tuning into this channel please consider liking commenting and sharing this video some people say god i will never submit my body to fornication again they have chosen god's will that's good but after they say that they are watching a seasonal movie and from that movie they watch something that triggers death and they go back to masturbation they go back to fornication some people say god i will never cheat people again and they are still parleying using worldly principle after a while somebody brings a contract of one million and they say kai this thing no easy hi lord lord help me lord help me lord help me you're already falling if you surrender your will to god the next thing is to be spiritually minded and how do you get spiritually minded you surround yourself with godly people you surround your mind with godly materials as you see me here sir there are some things that can never pop up on my phone because i know if i am not spiritually minded death will wake up the reason life dominates me is because i am spiritually minded so you surround your life with people who talk god who live god who manifest god you surround your mind with materials that stare you sometimes i sit down for three hours i'm watching miracle videos i'm seeing a. a allen i'm seeing jaco i'm seeing pastor chris i'm seeing andrew Womack. as they are doing this thing something is moving on my inside after a while i stand up i start speaking in tongues my body starts charging life is taking over life 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 that's kingdom that's kingdom sometimes i go and gather messages of revivalist and i'm hearing john wesley i'm hearing jonathan edwards i'm hearing billy akali and they are talking holiness talking holiness talking holiness the desire for sin dies so we are not standing because we are strong we are standing because life has mortified death and the reason most people are falling is because they are not spiritually minded although they have passed the test of, of self-denial by submitting their will to god but they have not become spiritually minded for life to wake up and so although god wants to send them as prophet to zambia god will not be able to do it god wants to send them as apostle to zambia god will not be able to do it god wants to send them as leaders in zambia he will not be able to do it and because god delay they will now go and call themselves apostle because god delays they will go and call themselves prophet and the demons didn't know whether they passed from kevadulam or not because you now say you are a prophet he will bring the battles of a prophet to you you will now discover that the capacity is not there after two years prophet is involved in immorality and he brings shame to the kingdom of god after two years apostle is involved in money laundry and he brings shame because he did not graduate from kevadulam he did not allow life mortify death he thinks kingdom is about title it has nothing to do with title it has everything to do with mantle what do you carry what do you carry the gospel of the kingdom self-denial life and commissioning when you understand the kingdom that's what will define you this is why from time to time you hear us preaching kingdom and all we are talking about is self-denial this is why you hear us preaching kingdom. All we are talking about is the operation of eternal life. This is why you hear us preaching kingdom. And all we are talking about is how to take over government. How to take over the academia. How to take over music. How to take over. Because it is self-denial, eternal life in operation, and systemic or territorial takeover. But as you now journey in kingdom, you will now discover that that thing you call life operates in a context life does not operate everywhere there's a context where life operates and the context where life operates is called grace and so for life to be extended to you you must make contact with grace this is where the gospel of the kingdom flushes into the gospel of grace so you can hear jesus tell the apostles go and preach the gospel of the kingdom and when the apostles are preaching you are hearing them preaching grace and then you are wondering what are you talking about they know that for kingdom to work you must encounter grace if you don't encounter grace you cannot find the life frequency that makes kingdom a possibility and so when they teach grace they are invariably teaching kingdom because grace is what provides the
the raw material for kingdom to find expression. And so Paul kept emphasizing the grace of God that brings salvation. The grace of God. He said, who has bewitched you, O foolish Galatians? Why have you turned from the grace of God that we brought to you? Why have you shifted? What is the grace of God about? The grace of God is about every blessing that God makes available to the believer in order for him to be able to live the kingdom life. And so when you are talking grace, you are talking unconditional favor. You are talking unconditional love. You are talking unconditional authority. You are talking eternal life. You are talking the anointing of the Holy Ghost. All of the enablements of God that takes you away from the pit and establishes you upon your thrones. All of the uh, supplies of God that removes you from your weaknesses and brings you into strength. That's what we call the grace of God. And so when a man begins to function by resources that are not natural, know that he has understood grace. Because grace is divinity expressed through humanity. Grace is God manifested through human vessel. So when we are preaching the gospel of grace, what we are teaching people is how to access divine resources over and above human abilities. This is why the subject of grace works in the economy of faith. For you to access faith grace, you access grace without works. You access grace only by believing. So when the apostles are teaching and they want you to enter grace, they tell you only believe. If you believe in Christ, there is something of Christ that begins to flow through you. So the journey of grace is your ability to detach from self-confidence and step into God's confidence. And I can tell you, it's one of the longest journey that you'll make in your lifetime. That you'll get to a point in your life, you know this is what to do, but you have to check with God. And so sometimes you want to do a meeting, you have the money on ground, you have the strategy on ground, but you go to the place of prayer and say, Lord, this meeting, what are you saying? And the Holy Ghost tells you, don't do it. Everything we walk, but God says don't. You will see that, humanly speaking, it looks feasible. But by grace, he said don't. If your confidence is in money and strategy, you will go ahead. But if your confidence is in his grace, that thing God told you, you will rely on it more than what you have on ground. You want to enter a business, and then they tell you, you are going to make 300%. You now went to God and said, Father, there is a business before me. And the Holy Ghost said, don't go forward. Although the business looks as if everything will work, but God said, don't go. You know that your strength is not in you. It's the God in you that provides strength. So what you will do is that, although this business looks lucrative, I won't try it. That's a man who has understood grace. When you understand grace, the proof is that now you believe in God completely. So the message of grace is actually the message of faith. When you trust in God, God's ability manifests through your life. But I can tell you again that many have not understood the subject of grace. There are many people who are teaching grace, but they are teaching human ability. There are many people who are teaching grace, they are teaching human competence. And the problem is that the way grace works is that it doesn't want you to take the glory. Because we have this treasure in eighteen vessel that the excellency might be of God and not of man. Take for example, in this conference from tomorrow, we are going to start focusing on miracles signs and wonders i have laid hands on the blind before the eyes open i have commanded deaf ears open before they have opened i have told cripples before stand up and walk and they start walking but god forbid that i'll be foolish to walk to this place and say yesterday a cripple walk and so on the strength of that if you can't walk stand up i'll be in trouble god forbid that i come with a suit and say because i'm wearing a white suit every deaf ear open there will be crisis if I'm coming for that service, I will still say, Lord, I believe in you today the same way I believed yesterday. Because it was not me that healed the sick. You only asked me to touch them. You were the one that knew what flowed from you to hit them. And so, Father, I will go and touch if you ask me to touch. Believing that that thing that flows from you will flow again. Many Christians don't understand grace. This is why they are put in trouble. You know what? They become masters. So they have had an experience for five years. 
they have had an experience for seven years and because they have mastered this experience they neglect grace every time we preach grace we preach absolute trust in God and as you keep trusting God the river of grace keeps flowing through your life so you get to that point where you say it is not I but Christ that lives in me Pause. thanks for watching see you in the next video